Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. This is part four of me talking about my experiences working on TV shows and whatnot. And uh, definitely check out the other parts if you want to hear the full story and learn a lot about it. And we're here hanging out with Casper in the pond after doing my underwater gator tours here at Everglades Outpost in Homestead, Florida. Or you can come do a tour with me and Casper. Been doing them every Saturday right now. But let's go ahead and jump back into some of these stories about working on TV shows. And uh, one of the ones that is just... I mean, they're all pretty heartbreaking, like ethically speaking, but one of the ones that like just makes me so mad and breaks my heart as far as like actually working with the animals. And we'll scoot over here. Casper, come here. I'm gonna get him back over here so he's in the frame here. Come. So again, I have to be very vague about what I say and how I say it. Uh, we are forced to sign contracts to say you can't talk specifics um, and you can't, you know, let the secrets out about what goes on on TV and stuff like that. But so in this one, though, I was um, in another country catching a really cool crocodilian, a big one. And uh, so in this scenario, again, I can't tell you what kind or where I was or anything like that. So I'm going to be super vague. But in this one, it was really cool. A really amazing species I love a lot. And uh, we were trying to catch a big one that was like, maybe 12, 13 feet long. It was big. And uh, it was in this waterway and there was a tree that was going out over the water. And so we had set up camera traps with some bait around it and we saw it came over. And so we got it on video and I'm like, oh my God, that's, that's a big one. That's really cool. So then I'm like, okay, how can we set up a plan for this? Because in this area, they, they've been poached and they're very wary. You can't get near these guys with a boat or a canoe or anything like that, which is normally how I would capture them. And so we had tried that already and failed and we could not get near them. They're just too aware, they're too savvy to normal hunting methods. And so I'm like, we gotta figure something else out. So there's this large branch going out over the water. So I hung a bait hanging down underneath the branch to attract the animal. And then I got up in the tree over the water. I mean, it was like, it was like one of these. It was like pretty high over the water. I was probably like 20 feet over the water hanging out in the tree with the bait below and uh, we waited for nightfall and then I just sat up there in the tree like this just waiting and I would check every like 20 minutes or something turn on my flashlight look for him see where he is immediately turn it off and he was coming closer and closer and slowly closer and we had the whole tv camera crew was over in the bushes up on the bank so that they wouldn't scare the animal so they had to be back pretty far and I told him as soon as I get them, they're gonna know. There's gonna be all the splashing and chaos and I'm gonna yell for them, right? So they're just up there waiting for me. And so I'm up there. Now this animal, again, he knows something's up. He's very wary, very smart. You don't get that big being dumb in an area where they poach. So really smart, he knows I'm trying to get him. And so I'm sitting up there and so I started vocalizing to mimic the vocalizations that they naturally make. And so I'm up there in the tree just like, moo, moo, and like making these sounds and he would make them back at me. And it was the coolest thing. I mean, for me, I'm just, I'm literally laying like this up in a tree, trying to hide my profile behind the branch, looking up at the amazing stars. You're out there in the middle of the jungle. There's no light pollution. And I'm looking up at the stars, incredible scene. And I'm sitting here talking to this dinosaur, making vocalizations and he's vocalizing back to me and he's coming closer and closer and closer. And like for me, this uh, became one of my favorite memories and then one that makes me the most angry at the same time because he got closer and closer and closer across hours. And like when I go out to catch something like this, we're in it to win it. You know, I will be out there and I've done this. I've literally been out there until the sun comes up and that's my mentality. We're in it to win it. You know, we're going to get it done. It can take literally, you know, all night. We'll be there until dawn. I'm still going to do it. That's what we're doing. Fast forward six hours later. I don't even know what time it is. It's, uh, you know, we started right when it got dark. So it's like, well, like three in the morning or something like that. And this crocodilian is real close. He's like 20 feet away from me. Like it's in the bag. I'm getting him. It's happening. Like I got him. I got his number. He's coming in. It's just, it's just a matter of time at this point. And I'm gonna get him. And it, the light was not breaking for dawn yet. So I knew I still had more time and I was gonna get him. And so he's creeping in, he's creeping in. I'm talking to him, I'm calling him in, and then suddenly a big commotion in the bushes and all the lights turn on. The camera crew just walks out and they're like, no, we're done. I'm like, and then <laughs> crocodilian takes off. 
never to be seen again. And I'm like, what do you mean we're done? They're like, no, no, we're done. Union time, man. We're out of time. Yeah, that, that's, that's the amount of allotted time we have uh, for the uh, filming or whatever. I don't remember what it was exactly called, but they're basically their cameraman union. They're like, no, time's up. We're done. And I'm like, that, 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 that's the whole reason we're here. The entire reason all of us came here from different countries to this country was for that animal. And you guys just blew it. Just blew the entire... That thing is never coming back now. I slowly earned his trust over the last six hours and got him that close. And I was going to get him. And then they're like, no, nah, no, nah, we're done. Never saw it again. The entire premise of the show was to catch that singular animal. Didn't get it because it just blew the entire thing out of the water right there. And it just never saw him again. I was so unbelievably livid and heartbroken. Like I wanted to get my hands on this guy. And obviously we we're going to catch and release it. So don't worry. It's not like we're actually hunting it. We're going to catch and release him and get some data on him. And it was going to be so cool and they just they, they just screwed the whole thing you know and it was just horrific and like i was so unbelievably mad and i went from like one of the coolest situations of like i'm laying in the tree and i'm talking to a dinosaur in, in the jungle and like it was amazing to the whole thing just got blown and he's gone we're never gonna get him back you know so that one was just that was a big heartbreaker for me right there um that's a story that just makes me just oh i relive it as i'm telling it i'm like oh my god i can't believe that happened um, so moving on another story. Um, so I was on a show and, um, this is before I had like a big social media or any of this kind of stuff. And so I was promoting the show to my friends and family on social media. And uh, again, I didn't have much of a following, so it wasn't like a big deal, but so we're there promoting it and doing all this kind of stuff. And, um, they only aired the first three episodes of the show. So as I'm telling my friends, family, whatever, tune in guys, gonna be here, blah, blah, blah. This major network that I'm on and I'm proud of it. And this is so cool. And this is one of the first ones where I'm like kind of the centerpiece of a show and they just didn't air it. They just cut the whole thing. No explanation, no rhyme or reason why. Uh, if you watched me when I talked about in the first bit about you know my experience in TV, this is what a lot of TV shows do. They just they will air the first few episodes, and if it doesn't get the response that they wanted or vi uh, the virality that they wanted of the show, they just cut it and move on to the next thing. No explanation. The people that risk their literal lives to make that show, they get nothing, you know. And so that was one that was just like major heartbreaker. Um, talk about a, a lesson in humility, you know, of, of just promoting a show, telling everybody, come watch me, all my friends and family. And then they don't even air it on this major network with no explanation. And everybody for months, Chris, what happened? Chris, what happened? Chris, why weren't you on the show? What happened to your show? And I have no answer. I never got an answer. They never even told me why. I had no idea. I, to this day, I never got an actual answer. They just cut it whatever you're forgotten you know there's nobody let me knew or let me know what happened or why and i'm just sitting there like i don't know guys i guess i suck like what do you what do you want me to tell you like yeah so that's a very 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 humbling experience uh you know a lot of people when they meet me and they know how many tv shows i've been on or where you know like having over eight million followers on social media and they're like wow you seem pretty normal you're, you're pretty like humble especially considering all the work you've done and i'm like because I've had a lot of really horrible experiences and that humbled me. <laughs> yeah, that, that'll that'll put you in your place right there. You think you're really tough and you have your own TV show and you're like, man, I'm awesome. I'm kicking butt. And then they just cut it out from under you, cut your legs out, and you have no explanation, no rhyme or reason. You're just sitting there just depressed. That was really horrible. So there was that one. Um, another one, I was uh, just asking George to help remind me of this kind of stuff. I do remember. Um, so another one was uh, on a... There goes a donkey. Is that the mule? That eh, sounds like the donkey. Uh, yeah, it's a donkey. So, on another show I was on, um, like I was saying, how they stage everything. It's all fake and, and made up and whatever. So, I have to be vague again, and I can't exactly say exactly what was done or, or how. But on this one, um, let's say there was some enclosure building that was done for the alligators. I didn't do any of it. I literally didn't even know what was going on. The producer built this uh, facet of the enclosure. Choose my words wisely here. Uh, the producer put this together in a very shoddy way and made it purposefully as stupid looking as he could make it. And then he goes and tells a guy who doesn't even work at this place <laughs> to then look at it and then yell at me that I did a bad job building this enclosure 
like just the entire like the ludicrousness of this situation where like i actually work at this place the guy yelling at me has never worked there doesn't work there and he's yelling at me about a thing that i didn't even do i didn't even have anything part of it i didn't even know what's going on i just walked in and i'm getting yelled at and i'm like i don't even, I, I don't even know what's going on and those are the kind of situations that they create for you in tv shows a lot of the time where like you don't even know what's happening or it's something that, you know, the producer made up or the producer did or a situation that's completely fictitious. And now you're being scolded on national television by a dude who doesn't even work there. And I got stuck in that situation. I'm like, this is insane. And then when that episode aired, come back to actual reality, not reality TV, but real reality. Uh, I, that's when I was starting to run international trips. And one of the guys in charge of one of the trips talk to me and he's like Chris I don't know if I can allow you to work for our company and run these trips in this country because you are portrayed on this show as an idiot you're shown on this TV show as if you 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 made that you did that well he thought it was real for one because it's reality TV right so he thought it was real so he's like I'm supposed to trust the lives of tourists in another country they're in your hands and you can't even build that and I'm like I didn't even know what that was. I didn't build that. That was made by, and so I have to explain to this guy the entire way that everything is fake and made up. And like, he has to take my word for it. And I could tell from his expressions, he was apprehensive. He's like, well, it was on TV. He didn't say this, but I could tell from his expressions, like, well, it's on TV and TV's real and it's a reality show and you really did that. And I'm like trying to explain, no, I didn't have any part of that. And so I actually lost that job. And because of the TV show, because of this fake show with a fake situation with a fake guy that doesn't even work there and I'm being scolded for something I didn't even do and I lose a real world opportunity where I'm working in other countries, which is like the dream job for me. And I lose it because of this fake show. Like, and that was, that was like the real kicker for me right there where I was, okay, I'm done. I'm, I'm done with this. And that was, I mean, I've had a lot of really bad experiences with TV, but that one, that was the real kicker right there where it had real world consequences for me in that situation. It was awful, you know? So that one, that was really awful for me. Um, another one that was really awful for me is like, here's what I'm now currently famous for. So I'm glad I did a lot of TV stuff when I was younger. And now like I, when I'm out in public, I get recognized a lot. Um, now back in the day when I did a lot of TV stuff, Thank you. So if you guys are wondering why I'm so confident with my back turned to Casper, because George is also watching Casper the whole time. So if George has made expression, I know Casper's on the move. So if you're like, man, he's really confident with the gator right there. Yeah, we're working here. Okay. <laughs> but um, but yeah, let's see what he does. And if he just hangs out, it's fine. Maybe he wants to just hang out on the bottom. I'll position myself uh, over here so we're safe. So um, can you still see him? You can move this way and kind of like, you know what I mean? So he's still in the frame too, so people can see what he's doing. But uh, yeah, so back in the day when I did a lot of TV, I would be out in public and I would often be recognized because of my TV work. And I'd be out at dinner or something like that. And I had people come up and like, oh my God, you know, I, I love seeing you on this show and I love seeing you on this network. And that would happen like all the time. Uh, there was a point where like, I was like really famous from TV stuff almost every time I went out to dinner or was out in public, I would have somebody recognize me. Uh, one time I even got caught in an impromptu autograph signing where like I was, I was at a Bass Pro Shop, not for an event. I was just there to buy some stuff. And somebody's like, oh my God, Chris, can you sign this? And I'm like, yeah, sure, you know? And then other people are like, oh my God, oh my God. And then before I knew it, I had like a line of like five or 10 people. And I'm like, okay, yeah, sure. And they're like, oh, I need something for you to sign. And then somebody at Bass Pro went and printed some pictures of me right there. Like, yeah, 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 here you go. And then before I knew it, I got stuck there for like three hours. There was a line out the door of people lined up for me to sign autographs. And I got trapped in the Bass Pro for like three hours. Um, so that was fun. And uh, if you, especially if you know me now and you're like, what? You were like famous, famous? I'm like, bro, I used to get paid $1,000 to go to an event just to sign autographs. It was crazy. Um, but that all passed, right? And then now I have people, when I go out, people recognize me, not nearly as often, but I get recognized um, oh, about usually once or maybe three times a week, I'll get recognized when I'm out in public. Uh, people know me from my social media, which is really cool for me because my social media is real. My social media is who I really am. And so when people recognize me now, I'm like, yeah, hey, how you doing? It's really, it's, it's cool for me. Back then, people were recognizing me for TV shows that were fake and that I hated. And so people like, They'd see me in person and they'd be like, oh my God, you know, I loved you on that show. You remember when you did that stupid thing and that guy yelled at you? 
you know how many times this happened to me? Like literally hundreds of times. People are like, oh my God, I love that episode where this guy yelled at you for building that stupid thing. How did you think that was going to work? That was so dumb. I can't believe you really thought that would work, Chris. And I'm like, I'm going to put my head through the wall. And I have to sit here and explain to all these people like, that was fake. That's not real. But it was on TV. TV's not real. And I have to go through this whole thing like every day, multiple times a day, explaining to fans, if I'm, out, if I'm doing a public event, you know, I have to go through this like a dozen times a day, explaining to people, that's not real, that was fake, that situation's not real, X, Y, Z, and just over and over and over and over on repeat. And it makes you lose your mind. I can tell you right now, like you really start to go a little crazy repeating the exact same thing and being not accused, but it feels like you're being accused of a situation that you know you didn't do. And it's brought up a million times over. And so one of the worst ones that I am accused of was on a show uh, where I am currently, like I was just saying, my social media now is really cool and people recognize me. Wow, Chris, I love how you train alligators. Thank you. That's cool. That's one of my special uh, talents that I have is training alligators and doing work like this. It's really, really cool and I love it. Except I was out working on a show and they knew I love training alligators. And so the producer told me, Chris, we're gonna, we're gonna highlight your alligator training in the show. It's gonna be really, oh my God, really? I'm so excited. I'm not, I am not a main character of the show. I'm not important on this show. And I was really excited. They're gonna highlight my training. Awesome. So then they told me, but the way we're gonna do it is you're gonna have, I gotta, I gotta think about how to say this. So I don't cross any lines and get in any trouble here, but Basically, they were going to have me and uh, the star of the show argue about my alligator training. I can't say exactly how, um, but basically, long story short, the producer told me this is the way the show is going to go and it's going to highlight your work. And they filmed me saying all my pieces and explaining all my stuff. They humored me. They literally filmed me and had me talk for like an hour talking about alligator training just to humor me, to get me to go along with this, to trick me. And me thinking everything I just said is going to end up on TV. And I'm like, wow, man, this is so cool. I get to really explain how this works. And we do that. And then they film an entirely separate bit without me. And the entire premise of the show, the reality of it, I don't know. And then when it goes to air, they cut every bit I did about education. And the reason why he comes, I mean, you guys hear me say it all the time when I'm doing all my stuff working with Casper. It's like, it's training. He doesn't love me. He's not coming to me because he loves me. He's coming to me because I train him. He associates his name with food and I positively reinforce his behavior. That's the reality of it, right? And that's how I explain it on TV. And then they ask me on TV, oh, but it's not because he loves you, right? I'm like, no, he doesn't come because he loves you. He comes because he's trained. And then so they, they, it's called a Franken bit, Frankenstein, but Franken bit. So they make a bit where they cut your different dialogue up and then have you say things that never happen. They do a lot of that. They have you say things that you never actually said as a full sentence. And then they also put these pieces together and make it into something that never even occurred at all through different pieces, okay? I know it's kind of vague and weird to understand, but that's what they do. Um, so in this one, basically the scene culminated, again, I'm trying to be purposefully vague here. The scene culminated with an animal that I personally trained myself that the other guy did not train at all at a place that I was working at where I trained him that this other guy didn't work at. And then the alligator came to its name as I trained it to, but then they cut the scene together to make it look as if I was wrong and it was coming to the other guy because it loved him, not because I had trained that animal for months. And then it gets put on TV as if this is reality and I don't know how to make an alligator, uh, you know, come to its name or be trained. And again, I'm being purposely vague and trying to explain this in the best way I can without, you know, causing problems here. But that entire situation that gets put on TV and then my thing that I am most proud of, which is the cognitive ability of alligators and trying to educate people about that gets completely thrown in the trash and tarnished. And then it is forever on TV as me not knowing what I'm talking about in the thing that I am best at. And the thing that I am better than almost anyone at is tarnished and put on TV as if I am a complete amateur and know nothing about it. And for years to this day, I still have people come up to me 
wow, aren't you glad? They see my work now and people come up and they're like, you've come so far in alligator training. I remember on that show and you didn't know anything at all and you had no idea what you were doing. And I'm like, I'm the one who trained that gator you're talking about. That guy didn't train it at all. And it makes me lose my mind. And to this day, this is years later, people still bring that up and they still come up to me and I have to go through this whole song and dance again to explain to them that was fake, that wasn't real, X, Y, Z, like I just said. And again, just repeating the same thing over and over and over and over for years and being accused of something that you never did, it just, it makes you lose your mind, guys. So anyways, I know we're making this video super, super long. That's why I'm splitting it up so much, but it's a subject that like, it's very hard to explain that I'm very emotional about and really affects me a lot. And it has really affected my psychology over the years and how I, well, not only how I feel personally, but also how I work to portray reality and why I try so hard to portray reality. Um, so to wrap this whole little segment up about the TV stuff, would I ever do TV again is what I'm asked all the time. And my answer is usually no, unless I have creative control. So I don't want to say I would never do TV again because I do still work on TV shows uh, behind the scenes, you know, and whatnot. I still do that. Um, but as far as me being on camera for TV shows, I turn down, I get, I get requests from producers um, usually, I don't want to say maybe about two or three a month I get. Um, that's pretty normal for me. And I shoot all of them down. I say no to almost all of them. Unless I know the people involved personally um, or I am contractually able to have creative control, I'm not gonna have any part of it. And so that's the only way I'm gonna do it because I've done so many of these bogus shows that are just, it's insane how they do these TV shows. So that's why I'm like, nah, I'll just stick to my social media, I'm good. Um, but what I do want in the future, maybe. And spoiler alert, I am talking to a producer about possibilities right now. I'm not gonna, there's nothing to really say other than possibilities, but if I can get creative control and I can actually do things the way I want to do it, I would still do it even after the immense amount of negative experience that I've had, but it would have to be the right thing and I doubt that that will ever come, but maybe one day. But then the other thing too though is TV is practically dead. I mean, it's still, there's still great advantage if I do end up doing it. There are still massive advantages of having a major network behind you and it would be greatly beneficial for me, especially as I'm building my new rescue. So that's the only reason why I would think about doing it. But um, social media is definitely where it's at. That's why I try to do all these videos. And uh, social media is the future of media. Uh, TV media is on the decline and it's probably gonna go away within the next couple decades, but there's still enough right now. Maybe I could still make something work out and make it work for me. Who knows, um, but it is something I think about. But anyways though, guys, uh, let's bring Casper back up here and wrap this video up. Oh, where are you going? It's me. It's me. He like he got kind of he got kind of spooked for a second. He didn't know it was me. Hey, Casper. Casper, come, come here, come. There you go. So he'll turn right around. That was kind of cool, actually. We've been sitting still for so long. I don't think he realized it was me touching him, and he immediately went to swim away like I was a threat. Where are you going? It's me, you big goofball. Come, come here. There you go. Yes, good boy. Okay, there you go. You're okay. But yeah, so. Thank you guys so much for uh, watching the video. As always, like, share, subscribe, all that fun stuff. And if you made it through all of these videos, I know I go on and on about this, um, but you know, the TV thing, I know these videos are much longer than they normally are. I know most people don't have the attention span to make it through the end of this, but if you did, I really appreciate it because this is also like me just kind of doing like a confessional almost and getting a lot of this stuff off my chest because it, it is really emotional for me and it really has affected me over the many years of working on these shows. So hopefully you guys, uh, you know, felt some of the heart coming out on this and you enjoyed, you know, going through this little mini series with me. And uh, yeah, uh, we'll see you guys on the next video. Thanks for watching.